Praise Yah. Praise Yah, brothers and sisters. Baruch are all who revere Yahuwah, Yahweh, and walk in his ways. We are a chosen generation, that remnant people, a royal priesthood, a Kodesh, set apart nation, peculiar people, that we should show forth the praise of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. May we continue to get into more and more light. Brighter and brighter light, right? Praise Yahuwah. So today we're going to talk about decree. Decree and a thing. Earlier in the, in the week, I was looking through a notebook and I saw where I had taken notes about decreeing and the authority that we have in the name of Yahuwah. And um, I felt led to just do a little short little something to remind Yah's people who may have let it slip, like sometimes I do. That we do have that authority as part of our inheritance. That we have the authority in the name of Yahuwah. In the name of Yahushua has been. So I'm going to read um, from Psalms to Helium 40. Verse 14. First as it is written. And then I'm going to do it as a decree. Or I'm just going to do it as a decree. Just to save time. Um. So he says, be pleased, Yahuwah, to deliver me. Yahuwah, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them be desolate for reward of their shame that say unto me, aha, aha. Dawid knew who he was in Yahuwah. And he, when he prayed, he prayed in a manner of decreeing. Um, and so that's what we can do. And he always got results. Um, so then we are going to now listen to the meaning of the word decree. And the first word I'm going to tell you about is called dictus. It's pronounced dictac. And I heard a lady several, several, several years ago talking about it. And um, she gave the definition. She said it's a German word um, for decree. And that it means a statement or order that cannot be stopped. It is a harsh settlement imposed on a defeated opponent or enemy. That's deep, right? That's power. In the Hebrew meaning, uh, it means to divide, to cut in two, to separate or exclude. Therefore, to decree is to divide and separate and permanently, and permanently make it valid. It's unchangeable, it's an order, a command, and it is imperative. So there's power in decreeing a thing. If you remember in the book of Esther, um, Haman set out a decree against all the Jewish people for his because of his hatred for uh, uh, Mordecai and the Jewish people. And um, he tricked the king into getting that power. But we didn't trick the king to get in the power. First of all, our king knows all things. There's no way he's going to be tricked. Um, but he has given it to us as joint heirs with his been for believing on him and believing in him um, and trusting in them and standing on their word and guarding the Torah and being Shabbat keepers and commandment keepers. So we've been giving that, given that authority against the enemy. So, but in the book of Esther, you'll have to read it again. You'll see. And then the king in the end gave Esther the same power, the same power and authority. So, in Job 22, verse 28, it says, You shall also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, and the light shall shine upon your ways. So, it will be seen. What we speak, it will be seen. Um, the truth of it will come to light. Um, the results of it will come to light. And we can de decree a thing. Elohim told Job that, and it's the same for us. In Mark eleven twenty two, 22, and Yahushua answering said unto them, his taught ones, have faith in Elohim, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be you removed 
and be you cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. And then Yahushua said in, in Matthew 18, verse 18, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in the Shamayim, in the heavens, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in the Shamayim. Wow. Luke 10, verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In his name. Before I close, I want to read uh, an event that took place in the book of Acts. <clears throat> In um, book of Acts chapter 19, beginning with verse 11. And Yah worked special miracles by the hands of Saul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of Yahuwah HaMashiach. Okay, so they called people to them that had evil spirits, right? They're going to do the same thing, they thought. We adjure you by the name of Yahushua, whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of the one Sceva, a Jew, and the chief of priests, which did this. And the evil spirit answered and said, Yahushua I know, and Saul I know, but who are you? And the men in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Now we don't want to be in that um, place where we're going to stand up against the enemy in fake power and authority. First of all, they, they said... <laughs> In the name of Yahushua, who Paul, Saul's preaches. So that proved right there, they didn't even know him. Okay, they didn't even know him. They had no intimate relationship with Yahushua and his father, Yahuwah. They were going by what someone else has said. So how do we do this? How do we decree and it be as it's written in Job that it shall be established unto us? Well, we've got to know him. We've got to know him, know his word, have a clean heart before him clean motives okay so when we decree a thing we have to remember that it is established but not in our own strength it is in the strength and the power and the validity of Yahuwah's name and Yahushua said whatever we ask in his name Yahushua's name the father would do it for us Yahushua told us that we can bind and we can loose on earth and we'll see the results heaven's gonna back us Okay, so to me, that could even mean that the warfare is going to take place, which is bringing a path, it's going to take place in the Shamayim, just like with um, Daniel. When the messenger came to him and said, after three weeks, he said, listen, the minute you prayed, it was, your request was, was answered. But there was warfare going on in the Shamayim before the answer could be delivered. So when we um, bind and loose anything on earth, it shall be done for us in the Shamayim, in the heavens. Okay, so remember it's not in our strength. Our motives have got to be pure. We have to know where our strength comes from, where our help comes from. Um, one Psalms 121, Taylor 121, I look to the hills from which comes my help. My help cometh from Yahuwah. Our words change our atmosphere. So what do we want? If we want our atmosphere to be that that lines up with the word of Yahuwah, then we need to speak his word, right? Our words change our atmosphere. And we have to remember that when we decree, it separates and it divides and it makes it valid, permanently valid from the opposing spirits that come to kill, 
still kill and destroy. We are vessels of victory if we would claim that victory in Yahuwah, if we would stand on that victory in Yahuwah, and we walk in such a way that we know we belong to him and that whatever he says and we agree with is ours. If we start exercising um, decree and now, taking that authority now on the, the, even the greatest thing we go through right now is nothing compared to what's coming. Um, but if we start doing it now, we'll be able to walk in great victory during the worst of days. Those are going to be the people who know their Elohim and will do the, strong, the great exploits. we got to start doing it now. We have to start preparing to be prepared. We have to start preparing now to be prepared. There's a message on that of, of that same title in um, on, on this um, platform if you want to seek it out. So we must know Yah's words so we can decree it. We can't decree his word if we don't know it. We have to know his plan of good and that expected end that he has for us so that we can decree it. So let's do Psalms 91 in closing. It is a decree. And I always make it personal. I took out the you and, and I made it me and we. So we who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we can say of you, Yah, that you are our refuge and you are our fortress, the one in whom we trust. Surely you will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. You will cover us with your feathers and your wings shall we trust. Your truth is our shield and our buckler, our armor. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted in noonday. A thousand shall fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. It won't come nigh us. It will not come anywhere near us. For only with our eyes will we behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I've made Yahuwah my refuge, even the most high my habitation, there shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. For you have given your angels charge over me, Yahuwah, to keep me in all my ways. They'll bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I will tread upon lions and adders, and young lions and dragons will I trample under feet. And because I've set my love upon you, therefore will you deliver me. You will set me on high because I've known your name. I shall call upon you and you will answer me and you will be with me in trouble. You will deliver me and you will honor me and with long life will you satisfy me and show me your salvation. I decree this word. I am in agreement with this pro these promises. <sighs> All in Yahuwah's name. And because of Yahushua's obedience, and completing the work that he was sent to do. So with that, brothers and sisters, be encouraged. Remember, we can decree a thing and it shall be established unto us. Find it in the word, stand on and decree it to be so. And it will knock down the doors of the, our opposing, um, our enemy, the, the, and bring us victory over the adversary. And... Um, we won't be defeated because the word decree means a harsh settlement imposed on a defeated opponent or enemy. And I like that because he's already defeated. Our opponent's already defeated. But if he's not defeated in our mind and in our thinking, you know, he's as alive as we let him be, right? So let's begin, to, let's begin exercising that now. You know, there's a scripture, I think it's in Jeremiah, it says, that if, and I'm not quoting it right, I apologize, but something like this, that um, if we um, are having problems, you know, running with the with the horsemen, what are we going to do with the horses or something like that? I apologize. I'm going to put it in the comment, just below in the comment box, the description box, so that you can read it. Um, but in other words, if we can't, you know, uh, be overcomers and more than conquerors now and decree and stand strong now what are we going to do when this stuff is turned so upside down 
I mean, everything is being played to bring us to that place. There's so much, there's chaos, but it's not as much chaos as it's going to be. There's confusion. There's more and more deception being, uh, just so much taking place right now that is setting the stage. We're setting the stage where there's going to be a divide among the peoples. There's going to be a divide. And there's going to be more on one side than there is on the other. But the size that the side that looks like they're small in size, small in number, are the greater ones. And so we want to be like the Joel army. We want to be strong. We want to be valiant. We want to do our father good, right? We want to bring good to him. Well, I don't want to say the word proud because he is not proud. He don't have to be proud. <laughs> he is. He is the self-existent one. He has always existed. He is. So he doesn't um, He doesn't really need anything from us to make him who he is. But it brings him honor when we do extol him and, and raise him up. And especially in our actions and the lives that we live. Because he doesn't want lip service from us. He wants us to do it. So with that, as always, be encouraged. I love you and Yahuwah. And I hope we all make it. I hope I make it. I do not want to be among those who think I, I'm okay. Because I know there's so much more that needs to be done to line up with his word and his expectation. He is so worthy of the best of all of us. And you know, I was thinking today, um, the story of Ruth and um, Boaz... You know, okay, you know, I say I'm slow sometimes, and sometimes I don't know what other people have, may have always known. But I was thinking about that today, and it came to me like, oh, okay. You know, I always hear, or my understanding of the story is that how um, the kinsman redeemer, you know, came like almost like that one on, you know, that knight on shining, uh, that shining armor on his white horse, and he rescued the damsel in, in distress. But you know what I saw today was that that man was not married. He could have very well been. He was a landowner. You know, he seemed to be very well known in, in their area. And he was not married yet. And it came to me that him being our kinsman redeemer, right? He's, he's a reflection of our kinsman redeemer, Yahuwah. He was waiting for that right one. He was waiting for that right one. Just like Yahushua. Yahuwah is waiting to get that bride all together and ready for his bin. Wow. I was like, oh, Father, I never saw like that before. Boaz wasn't married yet. Why not? Why not? Surely there were a lot of girls who would have really liked to have been married to him. But he wasn't. Until Ruth. So I thought, I said, I need to go back and read and just look at some of her qualities. I mean, I know it's tough in my head, but I really want to really look into that. And we want to be among those who meet the qualifications. Meet the qualifications. And that oil in that lamp, guarantee you it goes back to something with the word in the Torah and the um, commandments. There's a message of that on this um, platform also. Um, but anyway, so be encouraged. And as I said before, I love you and Yahuwah. I don't even know who you all are. But the fact that you um, are listening to the words that are spoken on this channel, um, I believe we're, we're a kindred spirit. <laughs> so until next time, we win in Yahuwah. We win in Yahuwah. Be strengthened. Strengthen others who also believe in the Father and all that is of Him. And we will talk again. Well, we won't talk again. I'll be the one talking, but you'll be listening, I hope. Praise Yah. Shalom, 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 and talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Praise Yah. We win in Yah.